Remember that day, remember that moment outside the High Court in London when the truth about the sub postmasters finally began to emerge. Tonight, lawyer Paul Marshall reveals in devastating detail just how the post office case against the sub postmasters imploded. The story begins in 2020 when he discovered legal advice sent to the post office by its own lawyer, Simon Clark. The advice, written seven years earlier but kept secret, says the credibility of the post office's key expert witness in several cases against postmasters was fatally undermined in key prosecutions. That witness is Fujitsu's Gareth Jenkins, the key architect of Horizon, the failed sub-postmasters IT system. The Clark advice was totally electrifying in cases where Mr Jenkins had given evidence to the court. In every one of those five cases, he had failed to disclose his full knowledge of the existence of bugs, errors and defects in the Horizon system. And um, the advice given to the post office at that stage was um, the consequence of that was that he uh, was discredited as a witness. He had put the post office in breach of its obligations to the court. He should never be called again uh, as a witness. Uh, 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 and various other things. But those are seismic because he was the principal witness for the post office. Paul Marshall says he's never discussed the Clark legal memo in detail until tonight. Well, it, 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 it was in a sense uh, a sort of um, eureka, got it moment because um, the, the, it, it provided in a sense a solution uh, and an answer to all the suffering and all the horror that these individuals had experienced over such a long time, it suddenly became explicable. The post office knew, but had been hiding it right up until 2019. And I knew from that moment onwards that all would be well. Uh, and uh, the post office had been engaged in, quotes, subverting the integrity of the justice system. It's a massive finding. But there's another bombshell buried in the legal papers, a letter that has never been made public until tonight. Seven whole years before the secret came out, the post office was so concerned about this flawed witness, it contacted its insurers. It's all set out in a letter from the post office's own solicitors. Marked strictly private and confidential to be opened by addressee only and dated 2020, the letter states, the document was saved with the name insurance risks and there are contemporaneous emails which confirm that it was provided by way of a notification to Post Office Limited and the Royal Mail Group's insurers. Such was the concern about Gareth Jenkins not telling the courts about the IT system's failings. The insurers were called in. But there's more. The Post Office board itself was specifically notified. The letter continues, our inquiries indicate the Post Office Limited Board meetings took place on the 25th of September and 31st of October 2013. We have reviewed the board minutes and papers identified for these meetings. It is clear from these minutes that the board was aware of the insurance notification. It was recognising the potential implications of that misleading incomplete evidence having been given to the court in many, many cases, hypothetically. Um, and that had colossal financial in, uh, implications for the, for the post office and its commercial model. So there you have it. The post office board itself knew their star witness was a problem. They had to tell their insurers. But hang on, this was way back in 2013. What on earth happened in the years afterwards? It wasn't, in fact, until several long years later that this whole strategy unraveled spectacularly for the post office. They tried to keep a lid on the whole thing. Those, of course, long years of misery and hardship for hundreds and hundreds of postmasters and their families. So the board knew the insurers were called in because they were so worried about their key expert witness. Yet two years later, Here's the post office boss in Parliament. And if there had been any miscarriages of justice, it would have been really important to me in the post office that, that we actually surface those. Um, and, and as the investigations have gone through, so far we've had no evidence of that. And as you'll know, we're bound by the Disclosure Act to make known anything that we come across that, that might contribute to that. Gareth Jenkins and Fujitsu could not be reached for comment. 
Fujitsu has previously told us it won't discuss this entire issue whilst the public inquiry is happening. The post office said the same. So effectively what the post office did was it kept the lid on this between 2013 and 2019 uh, and it maintained a pretense, essentially a false case, uh, in High Court litigation in 2019 when it contended we believe the Horizon system to be robust and reliable. It simply didn't have a basis for saying that. So what now? Well, these documents may be poured over at the public inquiry. Down the line, they could then have serious implications, not only for executives of the post office and Fujitsu, but for some lawyers as well. Well, earlier I spoke to the Conservative MP Duncan Baker, who was a sub-postmaster himself. I started by asking what he made of what the documents shown in that report. It's absolutely shocking. Uh, I mean, it encapsulates everything I've been saying in Parliament, that every stone we unturn, we find even more to worry about. And the video there is just absolutely incredible. The fact that the post office were notifying their board and almost taking out insurance to deal with this problem that was going to unravel eventually, it's just incredible. I mean, some of the, the, there are a number of strands in this piece, one of the shocking pieces of evidence, you know, the post office advice from its own lawyer, written in 2013, showed that their key witness was not a reliable witness. That in itself is extraordinary. It is also extraordinary that the post office knew about that. Yeah, I mean, it just feels as though things have constantly been covered up and the reputation of the post office has been protected at the complete expense of thousands and thousands of innocent men and women who have now suffered with this miscarriage of justice. And what about this idea that the post office knew this man had not been a credible witness and, and he had given evidence in five prosecutions and the, the board are notified? Well, I mean, those board executives right the way through to the chief executive that we know so much about, Paul of Ennals, um, from what you have shown, must have known all about this. I mean, what we saw on our television screens over the festive period, we have been told was incredibly accurate, and your film rather proves that. I mean, I suppose the post office board may say, you know, we were told, is it even likely that they were told only that we had this big insurance risk, but not to have been told the detail of why? Well, frankly, they shouldn't have been board directors then, should they? If you are a board director, you are legally and financially responsible for the direction of the business that you were a director of. I was once. You take that incredibly seriously, that responsibility, and those directors had a responsibility to know what was going on. And the lawyer in the piece says, you know, the post office told the High Court in, in litigation in 2019 that the Horizon system was reliable and robust. It did not have a basis for saying that. What should happen now to those people who well, played that role in the litigation? Well, for me, and I've said it in Parliament, um, there will be no rest for those who have suffered until there are criminal prosecutions. And as we unturn those stones, like you've done here, we are finding more and more out. A lot of this says a good deal about the culture of the post office in the past, yet even in the select committee in the inquiry, the post office current leadership were accused of showing contempt for victims for still being slow to disclose information. Are you convinced that the post office today has changed? Well, I don't know, because I'm no longer a sub-postmaster. What I do know is what I know from when I was a sub-postmaster. And the feeling I got from when I met Paula Venels back in 2016 was pretty much as though running a corporate supermarket with a post office in the back of it, that was the identity that they wanted. They weren't interested in those little people that perhaps ran the cafe with the post office on the side of it that might be in the Yorkshire Dales. They wanted the brand. It was all about selling. It was all about financial services. They wanted to be standalone so that the government didn't have to necessarily help fund them. And I get that. But the relentless pursuit of that and to move into that more banking and corporate nature I think was the undoing of the post office. We should have preserved the brand that made it so sacrosanct. Duncan Baker, thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Alex Thompson is here with me now. There have been more developments at the post office horizon scandal inquiry, haven't there? Certainly have, Jackie, yes. Uh, today was the day when more Fujitsu uh, employees were coming before that, and it emerged that they'd written emails um, it's fair to say pretty disparaging emails, to put it mildly, about Lee Custon. Let's remind ourselves Lee Custon, of course, the Yorkshire sub-postmaster, bankrupted in a civil case. 
ended up living out of his car for more than a year, finding work wherever he could. His daughter had anorexia, went down to five stone at one point. Whilst all that was unfolding, uh, over in Fujitsu, uh, the employees were writing emails to each other. Let's have a look at what they were saying. And see these emails, one of them describing Castleton is a nasty chap. The other, Fetters Lane, reference to the famous um, uh, execution spot in, in London, is where they used to hang people out to dry. Well, remember the post office certainly hung this man out to dry by, by bankruptcy. And well, today we caught up with Lee Castleton in London, asked him what he made of this. Well, that's what they did. They hung me out to dry on Fetters Lane. You know, they purposefully hung me out to dry on Fetters Lane. That's what they did, you know, to show everybody what would happen. So all the other victims could see this is what's going to happen. Um, I wasn't surprised. Well, fair to say, to be fair, those employees before the public inquiry today apologised unreservedly for writing those emails. Bring up today two more corporate events relating to Fujitsu. You'd be aware in the last few days that uh, the CEO was, uh, he was daughter, he was ambushed by reporters at, at Davos um, and the World Economic Forum there, and he definitely apologised on behalf of what the company had done. So did the European director, you remember, at the Select Committee of MPs uh, earlier this week. But he also went further. He said we should be paying compensation as well, and that has knocked a billion dollars off the share value of the company as a whole. And today, Fujitsu announced that they will have a stay and a pause on tendering bidding for any public um, contracts in the public sector in the UK until there's such time as the public inquiry reports. We don't know when that's going to be, sometime hence. Um, Quick reminder, those contracts are nothing if not large. They total, in the public sector alone in the UK, are reckoned to be £6.7 billion, almost 200 of them. Alex Thompson, Alex, thanks very much.